Hello! This video reviews the estimation of energy needs using the Estimated Energy Requirement, or EER equation. The EER equations, shown here, were developed as part of the dietary reference intakes. These equations are designed for healthy adults at least 19 years of age and incorporate a physical activity factor, abbreviated PA. Suppose you would like to estimate the total daily energy requirement for a 28-year-old female client. You measure her height and weight and find that she is 5 feet, 3.0 inches tall, and weighs 127 pounds. She tells you that she gets 30 to 60 minutes of exercise pretty much every day, usually walking. You ask the client about her walking pace, and she says that on weekends, when she walks for a whole hour, she travels about 3.5 to 4 miles. We now have enough data to use the EER equation, but each piece of information must be expressed in the same units or format as used in the equation before we can plug it in. First, we can use conversion factors to determine the client's weight in kilograms and height in meters. There are 2.20 pounds per kilogram and 39.37 inches per meter. Dividing 127 pounds by 2.20 pounds per kilogram gives us a weight of 57.7 kilograms. There are 12 inches per foot, so 5 feet equals 60 inches, meaning the client is 60 plus 3.0, or 63.0 inches tall. Dividing 63.0 inches by 39.37 inches per meter gives us a height of 1.60 meters. Now we need to choose the PA, the physical activity factor. The DRI publication where the EER equation originates includes descriptions of various activity levels and the corresponding PAs, shown here. For purposes of the EER equation, moderate activity means exertion equivalent to walking 3.5 to 4.5 miles per hour. The client's description of her exercise pattern most closely matches the low active category, so the most appropriate PA is 1.12. Now that the client's data are expressed in the correct units, we can plug them into the EER equation. Notice the brackets and parentheses in this equation. They tell us that we need to perform the operations inside the brackets or parentheses first, working our way inside out. We carry the results over to the next step in the calculation, and again first perform any operations that are still inside brackets or parentheses before moving on. We will wait until we complete all the operations in this equation before rounding anything off. Using a calculator, we multiply 6.91 times 28 to get 193.48. Multiplying 9.36 by 57.7 gives us 540.072. 726 times 1.60 is 161.6. The brackets tell us that we need to add 540.072 to 1,161.6 next. That gives us 1,701.672. We are almost done! The rules of mathematics tell us that multiplication comes before addition, so our next step is to multiply 1.12 by 1,701.672. This gives us 1,905. 0.87264. All that's left to do now is to subtract 193.48 from 354 and add 1,905.87264. Finally, we have our answer. The EER for this client is 2,066 kilocalories per day when rounded to the nearest kilocalorie, or 2,070 kilocalories per day when rounded to the nearest significant digit. The EER equation for males includes different addition and multiplication factors, but solving it requires the same steps. For example, if we wish to calculate the estimated energy requirement for a 52-year-old man who weighs 138 pounds, is 64.0 inches tall, and engages in no physical activity besides the activities of daily life, we first convert his weight to 62.7 kilograms, convert his height to 1.63 meters, and choose the most appropriate PA, 1.0. Then we plug this man's data into the EER equation for males, 
and complete all the operations with a calculator, again beginning with those inside parentheses or brackets and working our way out, and again doing multiplication before addition or subtraction. This man's EER is about 2,044 kilocalories per day, or 2,040 when rounded to the nearest significant digit. And that is how you use the EER equation to estimate energy needs for healthy adults. I hope this review was helpful.